what's up guys, Callan here again with Droid Life, and today we're taking a look at HTC's second big phone release of 2017, aka the one you're supposed to care about. Yes, I'm suggesting the U-Ultra just go away and HTC probably would agree with me because they want you to focus on this guy. This is the HTC U11, and I've had a chance to spend the last few weeks with it. So this time around, HTC not only is giving you an upgraded package, but they have a carrier partner and even tossed in a special hardware feature to try to make this phone stand out. But even so, is this going to be a phone that could be on your radar, let alone on your short list of phones to consider buying? Well, let's talk about that. This is our HTC U11 review. Again, the U11 is the second major phone from HTC this year following the U Ultra. If you haven't, be sure to check out our U Ultra review just below that like button. As for the U11, it's got all the proper 2017 specs like a Snapdragon 835 processor, quad HD display, 64 gig storage with SD slot, lots of RAM, a decent sized 3000 mAh battery, proper water resistance, and a high-end 12 megapixel camera. You've also got HTC boom sound and really good external speakers, USB Type-C port with fast charging, and this new squeezy side thing called Edge Sense that allows you to complete tasks or open apps with some hand pressure. I'd argue that the U11 isn't missing much of anything when compared to phones like the Galaxy S8 or LG G6. HTC really tried to go all out here and pretty much did. In the box, HTC is giving you the goods. Of course, your shiny new phone is in there, but you also get a plastic clear case, Type-C to 3.5mm headphone adapter since there is no headphone jack, cleaning cloth that you'll use 100 times per day, quick charger, and these really nice USonic Type-C earbuds. Now I know this may come as a surprise to many of you, but the U11 is actually a pretty good phone. I'd even go as far as calling it a really good phone because of the combination of the specs, experience, and price point. It is a bit of a mixed bag though. There are a whole bunch of things to get excited about, along with a bunch of little questionable details that make a difference in 2017 since everyone is nailing the basics at this point. For one, the back side of this phone is really, really pretty when clean. Keeping it clean isn't easy, but should you, you've got silver, black, and blue models, this being the blue. HTC has finished the phone with this liquid metallic exterior that does allow the U11 to stand out in a crowd. Depending on the angle, it's almost like it changes colors sometimes. It's very cool. Unfortunately, the overall design can't keep up with that pretty backside. The front side of the phone is a big slab of glass with curved edges, but it features huge bottom and top bezels in a time where everyone else seems to be ditching them. HTC also continues to stick to those obnoxious capacitive touch buttons on the front and because they love irritating me further with them, refuses to center them in the bottom chin, making them frustrating to touch. Call that nitpicky, but these are the things that differentiate phones right now. Performance and software here is quite good, as has been the case with HTC phones for a long time. Their HTC Sense skin, which HTC reps keep telling me isn't called Sense even though it is called Sense, is here, hasn't been updated in a while, and it feels slightly dated. It is running on top of Android 7.1.1, however, which is important since not many phones are yet. You get 7.1.1's app shortcuts feature, a mostly stock looking notification shade and lock screen, and an overall experience that won't look foreign to longtime Android users. There also isn't a lot of extra fluff to get in the way, so when you are in and out of apps or multitasking, things happen quickly. Specifically, some of the things HTC has done that I appreciate are adding in night mode for the display, giving you full personalization controls over things like icons, sounds, colors, and fonts through their theme store. I like the lock screen gestures that get you where you want to go without touching a button, and the display color temperature adjuster. And that brings us to Edge Sense, the feature that HTC wants to be the differentiator here. Edge Sense, for those not familiar, is a pressure sensitive hardware feature that allows you to squeeze the size of the U11 to launch apps, open the camera, turn on the flashlight, record audio, open Google Assistant, that sort of thing. Uh, it, it's okay, it does work as advertised. My problem has been remembering to use it. Since this is the first phone with this kind of feature, I don't necessarily have a strong opinion on whether or not it's useful. Well, it is useful, but I think it's going to take some time for us all to get used to using it, if that makes sense. In theory, it makes a lot of sense to do things without having to press a button, similarly to how their lock screen gestures work. But there is training there needed in order to make squeezing the U11 a natural move. So I'll say that Edge Sense is still a cool feature that might allow it to stand out. Is it a feature that gets you to buy the U11 over something else? I don't really think so, but I do hope it sticks around and others adopt similar ideas like this. The camera on the U11 is quite good. My issues here are that it's slow to load and often slow to fire off that first photo. I can't tell you how many times I walked away from a situation thinking I shot three to four pics and came away with one to two. Hopefully speed issues can be addressed in software updates. 
So while speed is definitely important though, picture quality is a bigger deal, obviously. In that department, I really think the U11 shines. The crispness of the photos taken with this 12 megapixel Ultra Pixel 3 camera are top notch. Colors are so natural and really recreate scenes in the way your eye sees them without doing a bunch of nasty processing and contrast ramping. No matter where I was, indoors or out, the U11 camera took a good photo that when I looked back on later impressed me. As far as software goes, the camera setup here is a good one. The shutter button is easily accessible. You have pro and panorama modes and even 4K video recording with an acoustic audio focus mode that lets you zoom in on a target you wanna hear audio from and it amplifies that audio. It's a pretty neat little trick. In the battery life department, even though this phone features a smallish 3000 milliamp hour embedded battery, I'd give battery life a thumbs up. Each day I charge the U11, hammer on it with three to four hours of screen on time and get through a day. It's too bad they couldn't fit a bigger battery in this thickish phone or they might have had a huge extra selling point here over competitors. Either way, you'll get at least a full day on a single charge, plus you always have quick charging to fall back on. Moving on, let's talk about audio for a second. HTC is one of the Android manufacturers that has always pushed audio, and with the U11 that doesn't change. Of course, the phone doesn't have a headphone jack, and that will annoy many of you. However, they are including a little adapter to let you use your own headphones, or you could use the really good USonic earbuds included in the box. With these new USonic buds, you get active noise canceling, really rich, deep bass, and overall audio clarity that I really wasn't expecting from inbox headphones. They create sound profiles for your ears and really are an impressive set of buds. If you're in the type who cares about external audio, well, boom sound is here and as good as ever. The external audio on the U11 is about as good as it gets for a smartphone, as has been the case since HTC first introduced it. So what else is there to talk about with the U11? Well, even though there's a lack of carrier partners, I would point out that the HTC version and Amazon sold version, which is unlocked, does work on AT&T, T-Mobile, and Verizon. So in reality, it is kind of available to everyone. At 650, it's not the cheapest phone, and it's going to be a tough sell with the OnePlus 5 around the corner since that phone will likely match the U11 spec for spec, yet dropping at a lower price, but the U11 still is 100 bucks cheaper than the Galaxy S8 and on par with the LG G6. I feel like I should point out that the phone does feel somewhat wide in hand, but it's not overly large even with a 5.5 inch display. The width is probably noticeable to me after coming from the Pixel and Galaxy S8 to thinner phones. By no means is the U11 uncomfortable to use. And again, the IP67 water resistance here is nice to have as well. The fingerprint reader is one of the quickest I've ever used and rarely misfires. And the experience from inbox to out is really pretty great. So should you buy the HTC U11? Honestly, that's a pretty tough question to answer. For me personally, there's one thing I can't get over and that's the design. The overall design here just feels like it's about a year behind everyone else. But for you, that may not matter. So I'll say this, the HTC U11 is a phone that's not going to disappoint anyone who owns it. It does all the big things right, like it takes good pictures, it performs flawlessly, it has battery that lasts a day, and it's really pretty when it's clean. So if anything, this phone puts HTC back into consideration, which is a place they haven't necessarily been in for quite some time. 